Hello students, how are you all? I know it's been a tough time for you all to study online. So to make your studies more easier, now you will be studying it through videos. Today we are going to cover the last topic, that's the fifth topic of the chapter, Forms of Business Organization. Since you all have completed the first four chapters uh, by notes and through audio explanations, now you will be studying the chapter with the help of the video explanations. So here we are going to start up with the last topic of the chapter that is joint stock company. To give a quick revision, the other four topics that you did was uh, sole proprietorship, second was joint Hindu family, third was partnership firm and the fourth was cooperative society. And in the same sequence now fifth one is joint stock company. Now before we get in detail with it, what I want you all to understand what joint stock company is. Joint stock company is also known as a public company. It is a company who needs to get registered. It's a compulsory uh, task for a company to get itself registered and then only it can start its activity. Joint stock company is one of the company which take the funds not just from the uh, bank and financial institutions, it take the funds from the outsiders also. Outsider means investors like you, me, we people if, are, if we are having our savings, what we can do with our savings if we want it to increase? Definitely we will keep it in the bank but bank also gives us a, a set number, set percentage, set interest on our savings and if we want to earn beyond that we can invest that in the joint stock company. Now where this joint stock company uh, is registered? It is registered under the Companies Act 1956 and after being registered and run and uh, start getting the certificate of incorporation that is it has uh, started and finishing the last certificate that is certificate of uh, Commencement, these all things we will be studying in detail further. A company can get itself registered in the joint stock company and then it can run. Now that is getting, I know that is getting a little lengthier for you. We will proceed step by step. Let's start first of all with the definition given by Professor Henning. Here the definition says, joint stock company is a voluntary association. What do you mean by voluntary association? Voluntary association means Voluntary means willingness. So anybody can join joint stock company. An association is group, a team. So people can come together, they can create an association willingly. Nobody is going to pressurize them for this. So joint stock company is a voluntary association of individuals. As I said, you, me, all of us can join this joint stock company. But one compulsory thing to join a joint stock company is to run a company that the person should be above the age of 18, right? So here a voluntary association of individuals, many people, those who have uh, will to start a firm can uh, follow this. For profits, now why these individuals are coming together, why they are creating an association, why are they getting into a group, that is just because of the profit. Because profit is the main economic activity that's the main objective to run the business. I know you have studied this in the first chapter also. So we are just recalling few things from the first chapter that people uh, do these kind of economic activities. They do uh, take a pay, run a business, not just for the sake of charity and donation, they do that for the profit because profit is very important. Because of this profit only, the organization can run further, it can expand, it can pay all its liabilities and dues and duties. Okay, so what is joint stock company? Recalling it once more, joint stock company is a voluntary association where people are willingly coming together. And who are coming together? The individuals, right? Now these individuals are coming not just uh, for the sake of fun, they are coming together for profits. Having capital divided into transferable shares. Now what does that mean? Capital means the, uh, the funds of the company. Now it is important that when people are joining the joint stock company, 
one thing is important that they have to bring some contribution to the joint stock company to the company now what is that contribution like if i am a teacher and i want to join a joint stock company i can uh, give a contribution of my savings i have some savings and i can uh, take funds from my savings and uh, give it to the joint stock company and when i am joining it's a compulsory thing that at the time of joining every member even me has to give some amount to the joint stock company for its smooth running so that fund which is going in the organization is considered as capital now this capital how am i going to give this capital i am going to give this capital by purchasing the shares right i am going to buy the shares shares of this joint stock company there are types of shares also i will we'll go in detail with it later on but right now you just need to know that the shares are of two types one is equity and the other one is preference fine so i may buy any of it either equity or preference and after buying the shares uh when i'm buying the shares the money which i'm paying for it is the capital which i am contributing in the joint stock company so what am i doing my savings with the help of my savings i am buying any of these shares and that saving is becoming the contribution it is becoming the capital of the joint stock company fine now when i have purchased these shares now what do you mean by transferable transferable means it can be shifted if i have purchased suppose a uh, 10 preference shares and i am holding these shares for about 6 months right so i am the owner of these shares because i have purchased these 10 shares now after 6 months i don't want to continue with that joint stock company anymore so what i can do i can sell these shares to someone else who is interested in who is interested in buying it right and when i will sell these 10 shares to another person that person will give me the capital will give me the funds because i am not going to uh, give these 10 shares just like that because i have also purchased these 10 shares with some amount so i want my amount back so who is going to give me that amount the amount will be given by that another person to whom i am going to sell these 10 shares now it is not necessary that the amount which i gave in buying these 10 shares i may get exactly that figure suppose if i purchase these 10 shares and i have given uh, 10000 rupees right it is not necessary that i am getting back these 10000 rupees only if the market value of these shares are higher it can not be just 10 it can be 40000 also so i am in benefit of 30000 but if the market value of the share is low it can be just this figure also 4000 i am in loss of 6000 so that depends upon the market value so these that's why it is called as transferable shares because these shares can be easily transferred from one person to another that's the first point and second point i can sell these shares back to the company uh, from whom i had purchased these shares earlier right so i can give it uh, these shares back to you that you can take your shares and give my funds but the uh, the payment uh, method require is same in the second point also is that the amount which i am going to receive after selling my these 10 shares to the company so there are two things either i can sell it to some another person or i can sell it to the company but the amount which i'll receive in selling of these 10 shares is going to be based on the market value of that shares so if shares are the rates of the shares are higher i will be in benefit if the market value of the shares are low definitely i am going to be in loss so that was the transferable shares 
Now, when I have these transferable shares, I have an ownership. I am the owner of those shares. Of which is the condition of members. That means I have to follow the conditions being the member of that company, being the owner of those transferable shares. I have to follow the rules, regulations of the company. Fine. So I am revising this uh, interesting definition once more. That joint stock company is a voluntary association where people are willingly joining the organization. And why are they joining? These individuals are joining for the profit, right? For that benefit, they want to increase their savings. That's why they are investing their savings in this joint stock company. And at the time when they are joining, it is important to give some capital, to give some amount. And what are they giving? They are giving their savings to the company in the form of purchasing the transferable shares. Fine. So they are giving their savings and in return, what company is giving to them? The company is giving them the shares. What are shares? Shares is a part of a company. It's a very important part of the company. So the company is dividing that part into small units and giving it to the all uh, investors, those who are investing their savings. And after buying these shares, the investors are called as shareholders. What are they called? They are called shareholders because they are holding the shares of the company. And the shareholders are the owners of those shares. As I said, I have purchased preference preference share so I am the owner of which is the condition of members so here uh, depending upon the ownership title that's the condition of the member that I can be a preference shareholder I can be an equity shareholder right I can be a, a investor who is supporting the joint stock company to run smoothly Next topic that we are going to take up is the features of the joint stock company in our next week.